Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. I'm Jordan and welcome to yet another year of the mid-year book freakout tag. I do this every year, lots of creators do this every year. I thought this was my third or fourth year doing this tag. It's actually my fifth year doing this tag, which is wild. It's also wild, as I say every year, that we are already halfway through 2024. It definitely doesn't feel like it's been almost six whole months, but here we are, almost at the end of June. So let's get right into these questions. Let's talk about all the books I've been loving this year. What have I been surprised or disappointed by? And at the very end, we'll talk about some creators that I've been loving as well. All right, starting with the most difficult question number one, what is the best book you've read so far this year? I do not like being forced to pick a favorite book only halfway through the year because at the end of the year, I spend a lot of time agonizing over this decision. But to be honest, in 2024, I have not had that many five-star books. So there's actually not that many competing for my favorite spot. And many of the other books that would be in contention, I do have written down for later questions in this tag. So I'll save them for later and I'll say that for now. Probably my favorite book, that I've read so far this year is The Women by Chris and Hannah. I think I read this book in January also, and it's held up or maybe February around when it released, but this is a historical fiction book. Chris and Hannah is a super popular historical fiction author who I have read from and loved before, but this is my favorite by her. This is a Vietnam War historical fiction book about a woman who joins the war as an army nurse and it's her whole story. It's super emotional, very war centric. So if you like that, highly recommend it. If you don't enjoy wartime historical fiction, I guess this isn't for you, but it's not World War II. It is again, the Vietnam War, which is a very undertold or lesser told war when it comes to novels and stories. So again, I just loved it. What can I say? It's the best book I've read so far this year and we'll see if it holds up through the rest of the year. All right, question number two is what is the best sequel you've read so far this year? And actually, the book I picked as an answer to this question could have also worked for number one, but because it is a sequel, I kept it for number two. It's This Could Be Us by Kennedy Ryan. This is an adult emotional contemporary romance. It is book number two in a series. It's more like a companion series. You don't have to have read book number one in order to read or enjoy book number two. There is a book three slated to come out next year and it's just following three female uh, friends in this little friend group, each of their romances. So yeah, this is the second one. It hit me really hard. It's very emotional. I really enjoyed it. I just decided I should link all of the videos where I talk about these books down below so you can see more of my uh, more coherent reviews and more in-depth synopses if you want them for these books. So if I read them in a vlog or talked about them in a wrap-up, I will link them below. But favorite sequel? which also segues nicely into question number three, which is what is your favorite reread of this year? I do not reread many books, but actually in preparation for this book. Okay, I thought my answer for this question was Before I Let Go, which is the first book in this series, but I did not reread this book this year. I read this late last year, so never mind. My actual answer after consulting Goodreads I think I've only reread one book so far this entire year. So by default, my answer is The Midnight Library by Matt Haig, which is a sci-fi contemporary type book about like alternate universes, alternate realities for your life. I read it for an in-person book club discussion happening. I enjoyed it the first time I read it. I enjoyed it the second time I read it. I gave it four stars both times. So all-time favorite book? No, but is it, I guess, my favorite reread of the year? Sure. All right, question number four is a genre you've been loving. So if I were to normally list my favorite genres, at the top I would probably put mystery thrillers. Then I would say probably sci-fi is my second favorite genre, especially when it does blend as a mystery thriller. But those have not been the types of books that I have been reading a lot of this year, nor really loving. The books that I've been reading and loving have been romance and historical fiction. Historical fiction is not that out of the ordinary for me. I do consider that to be a genre I love all the time, but recently I've really been on a romance kick. And I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's really good romance releases coming out lately. I don't know if it's just been me and my mood and what I'm craving is like easy to read swoony romances to calm me down as the rest of my life has been pretty crazy and stressful. I'm not sure, but I'm embracing it. I'm trying out lots of different romance authors, lots of different romance tropes, and I'm finding that a lot of them work for me. So I'm hoping and happy to keep that going. 
All right, question number five is, what is a new release you haven't read yet but want to? So I'm pretty good about keeping up with the new releases that I want to be reading. I have a few in my NetGalley queue and also on my physical TBR that I know I will be reading in the near future. But one that came out recently, somewhat recently, that I haven't gotten my hands on and I have no immediate plans to read is This Summer Will Be Different by Carly Fortune. This is, again, a contemporary romance author and book. It did release just within the last month or two. It's obviously set in summer, so it would be a great summertime read. So I definitely should get on that sooner than later. I'm just really not sure why I haven't yet. So that's one I would say it's a new release. I haven't gotten to it yet. I have no immediate plans to, but I want to. All right, and then question number six is most anticipated release for the second half of the year. I've got so many. I keep a very extensive list of anticipated releases. Actually, a video coming out very soon will be my quarter three anticipated releases. But the one that I think I am the most excited for doesn't come out until October. It's called The Brightness Between Us by Elliot Schreifer, and it is the sequel to a book called The Darkness Outside Us by the same author, which is a sci-fi queer romance book that I loved so much. It's set in space. Highly, highly recommend it if you like space, sci-fi, and or queer romances. What a way to get me invested in a set of characters and their circumstances. I truly cannot wait to read this book's sequel, which is not typical for me. So I will be getting my hands on that book as soon as it releases in October and definitely one of the books that I will be reading soonest after I obtain it. All right, question number seven is my biggest disappointment. This is an interesting question. As many of us note, it's not asking what's the worst book you've read this year, which if I were answering that, I would probably say The Guest by B.A. Paris, which I think is the only book I've given one star this year. I just did not enjoy a single thing about it. But no, what we're talking about biggest disappointment, I want to feature something that I personally had really high hopes for and just did not deliver. Maybe it wasn't a one star book, but in this case, I think was a two or three star book. I'm gonna go with Ghost Station by S.A. Barnes, which is a sci-fi book. This is the same author as Dead Silence, which is a like a sci-fi horror book that I absolutely loved. So I was so excited to read Ghost Station because that's this author's follow-up book. But it really disappointed me for a lot of reasons, which I can, again, link that vlog where I read this book so that you can get some more of those in-depth thoughts if you're curious. But man, I was looking forward to this one and really was left disappointed. All right, all right, question number eight, on the other hand, is biggest surprise. So again, I could talk about favorite books, but a lot of times my favorite books or my five-star books, I think they're going to be five-star books or I have hopes that they are before reading them. So instead, I wanna talk about books that I didn't really have any expectations for, but ended up really surprising me. So the first and the only five-star book I would put in this category is called Thirst by Scott Harrison. This is a nonfiction book that I read for an in-person book club. The person who picked this book is really passionate about this charity called Charity Water. And this book is the memoir and the story of the founder of Charity Water. I figured this book would be informative about the global water crisis and about this guy's life story, but I was really caught off guard by how emotional this book was and by how interested I was in the informative portions about this charity. I know that this is a hard book to pitch and like if you have no vested interest in it, you're probably not gonna pick it up, but I was really, really pleasantly surprised and caught off guard by it. I ended up giving it five stars. So maybe if you're looking for some nonfiction to throw into your regular reading, I would recommend checking this one out because it did make an impact on me. And then some other kind of honorable mentions I wanted to add as biggest surprises are two contemporary romance books that I figured would be fun. I figured I would enjoy them, but I didn't think I would enjoy them as much as I did. And they are Attached at the Hip by Christine Riccio, which is a romance about this TV show that is Survivor meets like Bachelor in Paradise, basically. It's like a matchmaking survival show. It's so much fun. And then the other one is Mistakes We Never Made by Hannah Brown. I'll admit I kind of counted Hannah Brown out as an author, but she and her co-writer, her ghostwriter, did a great job with this one. It was a lot of fun. It has a road trip element to it. And I ended up giving both of these books four stars when I probably would have bet some serious amounts of money that they would be three stars or lower before I read them. All right, question number nine is favorite new author. This could be interpreted as either debut or just a new to you author that you haven't picked up before. Which is the direction I'm going to go? 
I'm going to say Anita Kelly. Anita Kelly is a non-binary author who writes queer romances and I've read two of them so far. This one, Something Wild and Wonderful, was my first five-star book of this entire year. I completely loved it and then I read their most recent book. I can't remember the name of it but I'll put it up here. It's about two female basketball players and I've loved both of their books so far. I know they've written one other one in the past which I have not read yet. It is on my list and then I will for sure be keeping up with all of their future releases because they really work for me. So definitely a new favorite author that I will be keeping an eye on for a long time. All right, question number 10 is newest fictional crush. This is a tough question. Despite me just saying how much I've been enjoying romances lately, the main characters and love interests of romance, I don't super often find myself like latching onto, but I've gotta say there is one that I thought of this year and it's Miles from Funny Story. I actually think I should go back and check. I think Emily Henry has written my answer for this question at least one or two other years. So apparently she understands my taste in guys, but Miles in this book is in my mind a combination of Nick Miller and Miles Teller, which is a combination that really works for me. And that's all I'll say about that because funny story is everywhere right now. You don't need me to pitch it, but that's the love interest that really sticks in my head as not only someone I find really attractive, but also very real feeling. Question number 11 on the other hand is newest favorite character. Again, this was hard to look back on and pick one, but one that I remember talking about distinctly is the main character in Waiting for Friday Night by Cynthia Williams. This is an adult contemporary romance and the main character in this book is a single, fierce, badass woman. She is a career woman. She knows what she wants. And actually earlier in her life, she decided she wanted a child, but she didn't have a partner. So she went through artificial insemination and is now a single mother to the most badass little teenage girl who is actually a football player on the high school football team. So just the combination of the two of those characters, I loved them. Unfortunately, I didn't love the romance quite as much. So this ended up being a three-star book for me, but this main character and her daughter made a real impact on me as women that I really enjoyed reading about. All right, question number 12 is, what's a book that made you cry this year? For these questions, I'm trying not to repeat books as much as possible, but I really don't cry that often from books. So my two answers I have already talked about. My two answers are both five-star books, The Women and Thirst. Historical fiction, I think is at its best when it's emotional. So I love that Chris and Hannah makes me cry. And Thirst, again, caught me off guard. Nonfiction book was not expecting to be emotionally impacted, but definitely was. And then again, the flip side, question number 13 is a book that made you happy. Because I do enjoy emotional books so much, it was a little bit hard to pick a book that made me happy. I could have picked like some kind of fun romance, but I am actually going to go with The Husbands by Holly Gramazio. This book didn't make me like giddy or anything, but this book was a lot of fun to read. It's very much my type of book about this woman who comes home one day and there's a man there and it turns out he is her husband, but she has no memory of him. Long story short, she ends up sending him back into the attic and then a new man comes out who's also now her husband. And she goes through this cycle of being able to get new husbands. It's just sci-fi enough for me to really latch onto and to be like, what a fun concept. I wonder what I would do in that situation. It also had a few elements of like emotion and real decisions in terms of like, when do you stop? When there's always something potentially better that could come down from the attic? When do you decide you're satisfied with what you have? But overall that concept, I just had so much fun with. And since thrillers and sci-fi haven't super, super been working for me lately, I did find it a refreshing breath of fresh air that made me really happy when it worked for me in this one. All right, question number 14. I love this question. Most beautiful book you've received or bought this year? So to me, that means it must be a book that I own physically. And if I were repeating answers, I probably would say This Could Be Us by Kennedy Ryan. I think this is my favorite book cover of the entire year. But just to give some more love to some more books, my other answer is Another First Chance by Robbie Couch. This is a young adult, queer, romantic, sci-fi type book, um, which is another very specific subgenre that does really work for me. I ended up giving this one four stars, but I just love the cover of this book. I love the pink and purple. It helps that I did buy a signed copy of this book. So 
a little bit of added sentimental value to the physical version of this book, but I do think it's very cool looking. I want more pink and purple books like this, please. All right, question number 15. What books do you need to read by the end of the year? So many. I've got lots of plans. As you know, I love to keep up with arcs as I get them throughout the year. I also love to read book of the month and aardvark books on a pretty regular basis, but it's a little bit hard to talk about what books I'm going to read for those videos in the future because I don't always know, but I also want to try really hard to read all of the rest of my owned TBR by the end of the year. I think it's super doable. I think I only have about 20 books. Let me count actually. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19 books that I haven't read yet and don't have slated for the rest of this month. So I'll go ahead and insert a panning shot of that physical TBR so you can see it if you're curious. But I would say all of those 19 books I would love to just get knocked out within the rest of 2024. And then the last question that I love to answer for this video, number 16, is who are your favorite book community members? I mean, on one hand, this is really hard to answer. I love watching booktube videos. So I've got so many people on my subscription list, in my sub box, on my watch later playlist, but I picked 10 for efficiency's sake to talk about here. Also, this is not counting the Fab Five or the four other little group of besties that I have. So Gwen, Jesse, Lena, and Summer. If you don't know them, I'll link them, but I talk about them all the time. But let's talk about 10 others that I don't necessarily talk about a lot, but are on my recently watched like history videos. So I know that I watch them because of everyone I'm subscribed to, I do actually keep up with their videos. So we've got Kate's book date, who is an author tuber who vlogs out writing books. We've got Reads with Rachel and Bookish Realm, who both provide really interesting book related commentary. We've got Welcome to Our Open Tabs, which is a cheat because it's the podcast channel of Mara from Books Like Whoa and Jess from Jess Owens. They do a podcast about things that aren't really book related, but sometimes book stuff comes into play. The Roomies Digest, Christine and Monique, I find really entertaining. He a Booktubes uh, reads romance books, but also gives some bookish commentary sometimes. Essentially Booked, I have loved for sure for the last year. Um, she does book math videos that are really fun. Jan Agaton, the aesthetic vlog queen. Queen, paperbacks and planners I've gotten a lot of my romance book recommendations from. And last but not least, Books with Lexi, who I do align pretty closely most of the time when it comes to my reading taste, but also she hosted an amazing readathon in May that I participated in, and she's been doing a lot of fun reading vlogs lately. So those are my answers for favorite book community members, but of course there are so, 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 so many more I could have mentioned. I think in last year's video I listed like a whole bunch of them and many of them I still watch. So go check out last year's video if you want even more book community member recommendations. But other than that, that is all I have. If you would like to answer these questions and put them in the comments, I would love to read your answers. Other than that, I don't think I have anything else. So thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you in my next one.